feeling suitably refreshed and ready for the big finish. It's, uh, it's my great pleasure, my name is Paul Race, by the way, from the University of Bristol. It's my great pleasure to chair the final session of today's conference. It represents the award of the 2022 Felix Franks Medal. This is a medal which is awarded annually by the Biotechnology Group in recognition for significant uh, advances in the area of biotechnology. The medal is awarded under the auspices of the Franks family, who kindly support the award of this medal. And it really recognises a contribution, major contribution that an early career researcher has made. It relates very closely to Felix's role, not only as a pioneer of biotechnology, but also his enthusiasm for supporting early career researchers in their development. This year was a, it was a particularly tough job this year to find the, uh, the ideal candidate. Unfortunately, we can only pick one individual every year to, to receive the medal. This year's winner, however, Holly Reeve, to some extent stood out for the pack because not only had she done highly impactful and important work in an academic setting, but she'd also successfully largely driven the transition of that work away from the university lab into industry and turned that into a, a really viable and exciting commercial proposition. This is work which focuses on innovations in biocatalysis and in particular biocatalytic hydrogenation. So without further ado, I'm delighted to hand over to Holly to give her talk. She doesn't get her medal till she's given the talk, she has to sing for her supper. <laughs> and then we'll do the awards ceremony afterwards. Thank you very much. How, um, how generous people are with their time. So nearly everyone who's been on this brief journey of starting companies is excited to tell people about what went wrong and to save them the bother of doing it themselves. So I think I learned quite early, especially with Will, that you don't need to call someone a mentor for them to be a mentor, just keeping in touch with people. It's useful to have people that have just done it who remember it realistically, as well as people who have done it, you know, 10 years ahead of you who remember it slightly more rosely, but, you know, having all those perspectives. For me, um, going out and getting training not only made me feel more confident in my kind of non-science skills, but when we got to the point of spin-out, it made the university and investors take me seriously. I think if I really focused down on just being in the lab, I would have had a really hard, it would have been, it would have been really hard for me to be taken seriously, but also it would have been a really hard transition. I mean, running the kind of project managing that big grant with kind of seven to eight postdocs at any one time, that was basically training for me. So it was basically developing the technology um, and, and me. That advice I got about not running the company and running the science was really important because, you know, I spent half my time telling investors how great we are. And if I have to then think, oh, but so and so the experiment didn't work yesterday, like that's just a really hard mindset. So having, being able to kind of split some of the concerns and, you know, I can worry about the money and Sarah can worry about the science, like obviously we talk, you know, but I think being able to think about it like that and, but also, you know, make sure that whilst I'm thinking really commercially, Sarah can give me the science reality check and say, yeah, we can do that or no, let's put that on hold. I think having that really solid um, and honest <laughs> working relationship was good. Talking to your PI early, um, there's a lot of difficult conversations, of course, along the way, but that was a lot of, that was a lot of answers, so. so anybody else? All right, I'll ask you a technical question. In your nitro reduction chemistry, yeah. you get 100% conversion to the amine. Do you ever see any evidence of the hydroxide? Um, it, it's a bit software dependent, pH dependent. Um, we've got a lot of know how this is still, because we've just licensed this technology from the university actually, and we're about to publish, so you can see it in a few weeks' time. <laughs> um, but yes, sometimes we see some intermediates, but we've now kind of tailored the reaction conditions, so typically we can always get completely through to the um, amine. And that's really nice, because actually in other biomethods you have to use um, vanadium complex and things that support these systems, and we don't have to do that. So I think, again, thinking about it like an electrochemist has given us quite interesting insights into <laughs> how to make that work. Anybody else? <laughs> Any more questions? Okay, well if there's no more questions, I shall uh, here. <laughs> Uh, it gives me great pleasure on behalf of Biotechnology Group and the Royal Society of Chemistry to award you the 2022 Franks <laughs> Award Medal. <laughs>